Hey everybody, this is Francesco Abrazino with the Uncensored Report. I want to talk a little bit about the path to Persia, the uh, ban on these seven countries, and how these seven countries have been targeted for um, regime change since, well, 2007 when Wesley Clark, General Wesley Clark, came out and let the world know about it, but prior to that. It's actually been six of those countries, the seventh, the Yemen, Yemen and Lebanon were interchanging there because they're now on the list. So, we got Donald Trump. He's come out with this executive order, which he basically said this is a temporary. Now, I say temporary because it's only for 90 days to give us time to come up with a vetting process uh, of refugees. It's not a Muslim ban. Out of 57 Muslim countries, pr predominantly dominated Muslim countries, 50 of them can still travel all the way. So it is not by any means a Muslim ban. If you look at how the hundreds of thousands of people that came from Muslim countries, only 109 being blocked temporarily is not a Muslim ban. Okay? This is a sit list. These countries were on a list that Obama put together. Regardless of what you heard of, Trump did not put this list together. You didn't hear the same cry from the weaponized major media when Obama put a ban on Iraqis for six months last year. You didn't hear any cries from major media when Obama stopped the wet to dry for Cubans and sent 70 to 80 of them back to Cuba two days before the inaugural event took place. So this is a temporary ban, a temporary refugee ban from these six Middle Eastern and African countries. These, like I said, these are countries that Major Clark came out and said that the United States wanted to topple. This was back in 2007. This, the other thing to look at is this ban, this refugee ban, temporary, is welcomed. by According to the research that just came out in a new poll, 59% of the Americans, I put it out there today, Americans are concerned. They're with, they're with the hype, the overplayed hype from uh, weaponized media, from a lot of these paid agitators that are out there um, agitating to drive home their uh, points, their initiatives that they want out there. But we, as Americans, we cannot turn our heads from the destruction that we have caused that created this refugee crisis in the first place. I'm here to tell you, we've helped create this. And I'm going to tell you why. We have heavily interfered with these countries for years, trying to go after that regime change. Obama, this bombing you see on this video, is Syria. Obama has bombed the hell out of Syria. He said it was in a fight to go after ISIS, but some people refute that. And I'm going to cover that in just a second on why we, on why we believe it. Now, the phone goes off. All right. You got these rebels out there. He's been basically funding them. He's been giving about a billion dollars in assistance to rebel groups that are moderate, but they're not moderate. They're close ties to Al-Qaeda. Some of them, like El-Nusar, have even more extreme views than ISIS. So we're out there funding this extreme ISIS group that we're trying to fight and purge out of Syria, supposedly, but we're not because we want to get rid of Assad because Assad would not let us put a pipeline in there which would basically route natural oil away from Russia so we wouldn't have to rely on them. Assad is a friend of Russia and he said, no, get lost. Next thing you know, we're in there, regime change, and sending in money and foreign fighters. Well, Iran, they get pissed. They have a mutual defense agreement just like the United States has with many countries. And they say, well, we got to come in there. We got to help defend these guys. And they've been going in there and doing that. They've been taking advantage of other Middle Easterns, the Afghanis, Pakistans, Iraqis, and just sending them in there. And they, we have that created that proxy war. This is essentially Syria is a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. That's what it is, bottom line. And it's causing a ton of refugees. The same with Yemen. Yemen is a proxy war between Syria are between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Saudi Arabia controlled the government that was in there. Yemen, Iran's backed rebels came in, got them out of power. Saudi Arabia didn't like that, started bombing the hell out of everybody, started using cluster, illegal cluster bombs, illegal tactics. And yet we continued, even knowing what Saudi Arabia was doing, we continued to allow our defense and our military industrial complex to sell them billions of dollars in weaponry just a few months ago, along with Canada. Yes, we are responsible for what's going on in Yemen. 
backing Saudi Arabia in this war, this proxy war. Libya, Gaddafi wanted to get off, the, go to his own gold standard. NATO powers didn't want that. They couldn't have anything to do with that in 2011. So they sent in and they said, look, we're going to start bombing the hell out of you guys with our planes. And we're going to support the rebel jihadists that are in there trying to take over and topple your government. And they succeeded. Now we got five different, I believe it's five different extremist elements, just like ISIS, and ISIS is one of those elements, fighting for control of Libya. All because of us. Think about it, folks. Obama bombed um, Somalia, has been bombing them throughout his uh, presidency. I already told you all about Yemen and some of the brutal stuff that's been going on there. Many innocent people have lost lives. I covered a lot on my uncensored report because it's disturbing. I had hoped that um, Trump would think twice about it. I understand going after ISIS. I understand sending SILs in there. But he sent in a ton of drone strikes already, killing innocent kids and families in there. It's a travesty. Sudan, we have troops stationed in Sudan going in there fighting regime change, regime change causing crap like this that you see on the screen with Syria. Yet we're not going to take care of the refugees that are fleeing. We're going to say, no, we can't take care of you. Our hands are washed. And I'm going to cover that in a second. Iran, they need to be on the list. I'm glad they're on the list, but I'm really surprised that Obama put them on the list due to the fact that he had such a good relationship with them, basically lend them uh, rearm for go after their nuclear ambitions, giving them a ton of million flights through the middle of the night. But there are some countries that are missing from this list. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, the country that has waged a proxy war in Syria and in Yemen, the same country that has foreign policy that helps these terrorists, the same country that finances these terrorists, that gives them the weapons, that trains these terrorists, that exported the radical Wahhabism ideology that had people, of, um, a significant amount, the majority of 9-11 hijackers came from Saudi Arabia. Why weren't these guys on the list? A lot of people say they weren't on the list because Mecca's there. And if you took them on the list and Muslims go to Mecca, then they're banned. Give me a break. United Emirates, they funded most of the people that 9-11, uh, that passed through nine, on, to handle 9-11. Turkey has been buying oil from ISIS. They've been letting them walk back and forth in their uh, on their boundaries. They've been letting them live there without a problem. And now it's blowing up in their face. Qatar has spent a ton of their wealth out there helping these jihadists fight in Syria and in Afghanistan. And that's where Al-Qaeda came from. Qatar. I, I mean, come on. Why isn't Qatar, Turkey, United Emirates, or Saudi Arabia on this list? In essence, the countries kept off the list are the ones that have gone out and created all these problems. Yet the P, the countries that are in there ha, that are dealing with these problems are the ones that are getting action taken against them. They're the ones being punished. How does that sound fair? And I understand it's one thing to want your safe country safe from infiltrating terrorists. I get that. I'm all for this ban list. Trust me, I'm for it. This temporary ban. Not of all Muslims, like I said, there's only seven countries out of 50. It's not a Muslim ban until we get a vetting system in process. Because we've gone out there and we've created this crisis. We've assisted through money, through weaponry, through uh, our, our foreign policy. We've done it. And if we can go over to these countries and create uh, havoc, then we need to be responsible for the refugees that had nothing to do with it. Innocent kids and women and children and, and men. Yes, men too. Elderly men, some young. A lot of them had nothing to do with it. But by us going in and destroying these companies and countries and not helping them, it's only we're only going to create more and more future ISIS type players in the field. Think about it, folks. Now, I like one thing that Obama's doing. Besides the vetting process, I think it's great. I think we need a vetting process. Our process has been basically, are you with ISIS? No. Good, you can come in. That's not a vetting process, okay? What we need is, and I like this idea, is a safe zone. Go into these countries, go into Iraq, go into Libya, go into Syria. Create a safe zone. 
you know, this this corner, this corner of the one, let's say a quarter of Syria is going to be considered a safe zone. Well, NATO, whoever you want, go in there and put troops on there so that ISIS can't come in and penetrate that area. It's a no-fly. Syria can't fly their jets in there. We can fly our jets to make sure these people are safe and keep them there. I'm telling you this. They don't want, most of these Middle Easterners don't want to come here to the United States as refugees. Most want to stay in their country. Just like when I go to Italy, it's a cultural shock. And they're a westernized country. It's a cultural shock. Can you imagine the culture shock these people go through when they come here? It's hard. I lived abroad in a year in Italy. It's not that easy, folks. Totally different cultures. Most of these people want to stay there. Why not create these safe zones for them? Let them stay there. You know, most ref refugees, someone came out and said, refugees are basically means they can come here, they stay here until it gets better in their home front, then they go back. But these refugees aren't going back. They're staying here. And I get we need some, and I'm all for refugees coming here. My dad was an immigrant from Italy. I get it. But we need a better vetting process or these safe, safety zones that I've heard Trump mention. What say you? This has been Frankie Abrazino with the Uncensored Report.